So this is a little different video than usual. We're going to talk with somebody from Lacuna Systems who's going to talk about predictive analytics. Now, this is for people who run big ass websites, <laughs> sites that if they go down, you're uh, out millions of dollars per minute or your brand is getting destroyed. You're, you're working at Starbucks or something like that. Uh, it's probably not somebody who has a little website on one of our cloud servers, in other words. So uh, we're going to get geeky right now with Laguna Systems. Who are you? So my name is Derek Andre. I am the technical director for Lacuna Systems. And uh, I come from a background of uh, network engineering and network tools and analysis and monitoring. Um, I've worked for some pretty big companies, Amazon.com, Classmates.com, T-Mobile, um, and I've done quite a bit to help them bring their level of network monitoring up. And that's what inspired me to start my own company. Very cool. So tell me about the world of network monitoring right now and, and why do you see an opportunity to start a new company in this? Well, so one of, one of the things that has always been uh, a pain point for me in my, in my past is these tools are very complex. They're often hard to set up. They often take uh, months of time and preparation to get them uh, to the point where they're relevant for however your network hap happens to be set up. Uh, what I wanted to do is create something that somebody can deploy in five, ten minutes and get relevant information immediately about their applications on their network. And that's really what inspired me to do this. So what is, what is it that you uh, are selling at Lacuna Systems? What, what do I buy? How do I buy it? And sure. What does it mean to build it into my data center? Our product is called Indico. And it is a predictive application performance management solution. And what we do is we learn about performance metrics in the load balancer or the application delivery controller. And then we, we take those metrics and we learn about them over time. And when these metrics start to come out of these confidence bands that we generate based on past performance, that's when we alert your staff or a large company staff about a potential performance issue. Uh, this can be sold either as a, a VM that'll run on uh, VMware ESX, or also we have uh, dedicated appliances, purpose-built appliances that are so you'd have to get, like if you're at Rackspace and you're, you have a system like Ted is, for instance, sure. you'd have to get Rackspace to put your appliance in there or? Yeah, or a, or a VM. We can okay. run on Zen and we can run on uh, VMware, et cetera. So. Very cool. Yeah. So what, once we set, get it set up, by the way, I, let's cover pricing. How much does this cost and how, or how do you price it out? So retail, you can get into it for a little over 20000 but it varies greatly as you go up. You know, up to the highest end appliance that we sell that is, you know, to you, very beefy, RAID 5, lots of memory, lots of CPU cores to handle a lot of analytics processing. Um, that one's upwards of $80,000. Yeah. And that's why we said this is for serious websites, not, yep. you know, yeah. a blogger. <laughs> it's not going to have sure. one of these sure. things running, right? Yeah. Uh, it's for uh, something like a TED or a Starbucks or a, a, big, a big company with yeah. a, lot of, a lot on the line. Once we get this set up, what does it show you on, on, your, on your dashboards? What, what do I learn from uh, having your system running? Sure. So first thing you'll be able to see is all of the applications that you have configured on your various load balancers. Um, you'll know about them within five minutes if you create a new one. And you'll be able to uh, you know, expand each ADC or load balancer. ADC is application delivery controller. Sorry, they're kind of interchangeable. Yep. But um, you, you can expand them and see all of the various applications that you have defined there, how they're performing, whether they're out of what we predict is normal for that application. Um, and then you can also set up your own dashboard. So if you like to see a certain set of applications, you can put those on your dashboard and look at them every morning. You can configure as many of these dashboards as you want also. So. If you want to have three or four of these, maybe for three or four different applications that you're interested in, you can do that also. When you were uh, showing it to me, I, your uh, system shows a chart and shows where things are not working or right. in real time, right? Yep. And it also shows a green, red light kind of thing, right? So sure. you know that a system's not working or it is working properly. Right, right. So we have a couple different metrics there for the lights. There's, uh, you know, for various objects within our system, or the actual ADC itself, so can we reach it? 
if we can't reach it, then something's probably really bad, right? Yep. Um, for each application, are, are they up? You know, there's ways to tell within these load balancers, is the application being reported up by the load balancer, is it down? So we can detect that. And we can also detect, um, are all of the resources that are supposed to be serving this application actually up or down? We can detect Including cloud ones from the cloud. Like if I'm using Foursquare's API and I'm pulling that in, if Foursquare's down, it'll warn me and say, hey, if, if your you location use, data ain't, ain't <laughs> coming in anymore. Yeah, the caveat there is if you're using a load balancer that we support, right, and that we're monitoring, if, you, if, you can, if you're using that load balancer uh, to send requests to servers that are in the cloud, then yes. Ah, that's, okay. that's the caveat there. Very cool. And uh, most of the vendors that we support now are in you know, Amazon AWS and they're uh, striking up partnerships with cloud providers to provide the, their load balancer as software in the cloud. Now. Very cool. Uh, Rackspace Cloud wants to be in there. Are, th are you announcing that you're gonna support Rackspace Cloud or are you looking to work with us? Yeah, we're definitely looking to work with Rack Rackspace Cloud and your load balancing uh, software load balancer that you guys have. Yep. Um, we are probably going to have to contribute some code to the open source community to get that done. So that it's kind of a nebulous thing right now, but we, that's where we're going. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. That's why we're doing OpenStack. Yeah. Uh, going completely with the open cloud. Um, so uh, this is great for those, uh, I call them data porn walls, but really are <laughs> dashboards. You know, you right. walk in every uh, startup or knock now, you see uh, people have these six uh, LED screens that yep. show the health of their systems. So you, you help build those, those I, can, I can build those really easily with your system, right? You can, and in addition, you can also use our API. So we have a RESTful API that you can use to get anything out of our system. So anything that we know about, you can grab. Uh, this is great for DevOps guys that want to write their own tools to do reporting, or maybe they want to bubble up information into some other dashboard that they have already built for the ops guys to use. Um, our entire GUI for our product was built on our API, so we kind of eat our own dog food there. That's very cool. You have search in this, and yes. probably that ma matters for people who have thousands of servers, right? Because finding the right, the right machine that's not cooperating is probably yeah, a little difficult. Yeah, it's been a pet peeve of mine, and you know, I've been in operations where I had to support huge enterprises that you have tons of these load balancers out there and servers and IP addresses everywhere. And so we, yeah, we have a search functionality that'll allow you to find any object within your load balancing infrastructure and just type it in and it all shows up regardless of vendor, regardless of its West Coast, East Coast, wherever it happens to be. Very, very cool. So that's another thing because today's big enterprises don't just have one data center. They have probably four or five right. around the world. Yep. And then lots of little uh, ones that are being fed off of that. Sure. And finding out why something isn't working in Brazil is probably <laughs> a little difficult, isn't it? Yeah, or you know, finding out that, that IP address that you're looking for, somebody called and you know, reported that some particular IP address is wrong or having an issue. Well, if you just type in that IP address and search for it, you might find out that it's in Brazil and you didn't even know that before, right? So it definitely gives you a, a place to start looking for troubleshooting. And oh, very cool. Cuts down. I, I'm not technical, so te talk to the techie guys. What, <laughs> what do they need to know to evaluate your system? Because they're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on sure. it um, this, over the lifetime of, of working with you. How should they evaluate your system versus other, other people's systems? Well, we, we do have an eval program, and there's some basic requirements is that you're running F5 version 9 or higher, um, that you're running uh, Citrix Netscaler 9.3 or higher. We do support some versions of 9.2, but uh, their API wasn't real well baked back then. So we also support uh, A10, and that's 2.4 and up. And so any of those versions, if, if you're a tech guy and you're uh, deploying a lot of your infrastructure on these types of load balancing platforms, uh, our demo is very easy to just get going. I mean, literally five, 10 minutes. Um, we, we do evaluations as a VMware image. So we'll just spin up a VM and point it at your load balancer and off you go and then you know, evaluate it for a month or two and see, see if you like it. See if it works. Yeah. If you were sitting with somebody who runs one of these major or a team, what else would you be showing them? What, what maybe to impress them or to <laughs> show them the power of it? What, sure. what else would you show them? Uh, one of the things uh, 
that I like to show people is how fast that you can actually learn about all the applications on your network. So uh, it's literally three pieces of information, you know, the IP address or the host name of your load balancer, uh, a, a username and a password. And the rest is just, you know, literally by the time you click that, I've detected all the applications there. You can see them on the screen. And typically that's just unheard of these days for anything that does any sort of application performance management. What kinds of things do you help uh, people learn about? Uh, you know, can, can you see that we're being attacked? Uh, some of the metrics that we watch are very sensitive to uh, distributed denial of service type of attacks. So you know, we'll see connections per second going way up for a particular web property. And then we'll see bits out going way down, right? Because these connections are just stacking up and no, no real traffic's getting out to the clients. Um, so there are indicators there that we can show you. And you don't, you don't really tell me what to do about this. You just show me a graph and say, there's something going wrong here and you gotta figure out what to do about it. Right. Or, or is that wrong? Well, we, we send you an alert that something is starting to happen, right? Okay. And uh, our, our whole deal is to do this 20 to 30 minutes before other tools are going to alert you. Okay. Because we're seeing this just start, you know, the, the denial of service attack, for instance, um, just starts to come out of that envelope where your connections are building up and this thing's just ramping up. We can alert you right then and say, you know, this is outside of normal for this application. And that uh, typically gives the responders an extra 20 minutes, which is a huge amount of time in a DDoS attack or even just a normal application issue that's a large amount of time. Yeah. No, that, that really uh, matters, and with the scale of these kinds of web properties, every minute is money. thousands, yeah. money, yeah. millions, maybe even millions of dollars in some cases, right? Um, how are you funded? Uh, you can tell me a little bit about your sure. company behind this. Yeah, right now we are funded with you know friends and family money, and also uh, one angel investor, and then primarily right now we're funded by sales, which is a good way to be funded. Yeah, and tell me about your team and who's working at the company. Sure, okay. so we have uh, the co-founders are Rick Sanga, and he's a, a former Amazon you know, network guru, uh, and he's our chief operations guy. Uh, we have Brett Tenling, uh, he's spent many years writing Java, he's our coding guy, he's uh, our director of software and product, um, and there's myself, and I already told you a little bit about myself earlier. Um, we also have Angela Eichner, who is our um, sales director, and she's here in the Bay Area. And then we have um, a couple other people that are loosely affiliated that, that do sales in Europe and do sales in Seattle, and as well as you know advisors that are around the up and down the East Co or West Coast here. So. Very cool. Um, it sounds like most of these properties are on traditional data center infrastructure. Are you dealing a lot with cloud? And obviously a lot of them are, are moving some pieces to the cloud. Do you help with that? Yeah, so we can, uh, in terms of helping with it, we can show you when you move services into the cloud, we can show you the difference in performance from when you were hosting those things on-prem to when you moved them into the cloud. We can help with some of that. Um, we're also, you know, as we were talking about earlier, we're really moving towards being able to support the uh, you know, complete cloud infrastructure where you have your, your load balancers in the cloud and you have, you know, all of your resources essentially in the cloud that serves up your web property. So. Yeah, and that's months away. Uh, some of it is and some of it isn't. Like I said, uh, you know, Citrix, Netscaler, and F5, they're, you know, deployable right now in AWS and some other clouds. Um, and so for some of those cases, we can do it right now, but um, like, for Rackspace, we want to support the open source community and um, you know support Atlas LB. Very cool. Ones, yeah. Where where do people learn more about you and uh, have a chat with you? Because this is probably not something you just <laughs> slide a credit card in and no. buy, right? It's something yeah. that well we can, but no. <laughs> Eighty thousand yeah, dollars on a sure. credit card? Yeah. yeah, there's a few credit cards around that'll do that, but not yeah. mine. <laughs> not mine either. So yeah. Where, so uh, where do they learn more about you? So at uh, lacunasystems.com. Very cool. And it's spelled L-A-C-U-N-A. L-A-C-U-N-A systems.com. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank Show you. It to me. Appreciate it.